Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace, back again with another NES Game Collection video. I have been going through the games for the various systems I collect games for, trying to decide which system to cover next, and I've noticed something. Most of the games for most of the systems that I collect for are either complete in box or complete in case, as the case may be. The NES, however, is the inverse of that. Most of the games that I have for the NES are loose. In fact, most of the games that I have for the SNES are loose. All of the games I have for the Nintendo 64 are loose. The reason I bring this up is beginning sometime early in 2015, I'm going to be buying a lot more complete in-box games for the three systems I just named. NES, SNES, and N64. I'm going to continue buying games for the other systems that I collect for, and laser discs and DVDs and everything else. I just thought I would put that out there. I'm thinking probably the next system I'll tackle is either going to be the Atari 7800 because most of the games I have for that system are complete or the Sega Master System because I have quite a number of Sega Master System games and only one is loose. The rest are in their original cases. Many have their original manuals. And so it's going to be one of those two systems. And of course I have a lot of European exclusives for the Master System. I also have my Japanese Master System but I don't have as many games for it. Alright, from MicroProse F15 Strike Eagle. Now this is a really decent looking cartridge. It gets me thinking. Of course there are a lot of people on eBay that sell loose cartridges. But there are also people who sell loose manuals and boxes by themselves. How that happened I don't know. But maybe I'll be able to just buy the box and manual on some of these really nice looking cartridges. I don't know. I'm just rambling. Okay, next up is a game developed by Codemasters. I know that in Europe most of the games developed by Codemasters that were published for the NES, if not all of them, were published by licensed publishers. But that wasn't the case here in the US. They were published here by Comerica. This is the final game in the Dizzy series. The Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy. Now, most of the Comerica cartridges that I have are gold, although I do have some that are silver. And of course, I have a dip switch on the back to help you bypass the third party lockout chip in the NES. There are two different versions of this release. I, of course, have the most common. Back in the day, Comerica sold something called the Aladdin Deck Enhancer. It was cartridge shaped, and basically what it was was it had most of the innards of a Comerica cartridge inside the enhancer. And then they would release a stripped down cartridge for a lot less money typically around $20, and all it would have in it is the ROM and then the shell. The enhancer version of this release is hard to find. In fact, I've never come across in the wild an enhancer version of any of the games they released for the Aladdin. There were seven, including the pack-in game. In fact, I've never run across an enhancer. Alright, from Nintendo, sequel to Xanadu. Fact Xanadu. From Sunsoft, Fester's Quest. Now, this next one is a Codemasters game from Comerica. There is not an enhancer equivalent for this release. 
her counterpart, I should say. There were several that were rumored to be coming that didn't come, but this one never even had one that was rumored to be coming. So the non-enhanced version, I should that's kind of backwards because they're the complete version. Firehawk. Okay. Oh. Before I forget. When you hit the high score screen of Firehawk, if you type in the word Dizzy, you will see a uh, demo for the Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Whether you decide to catch it or not is up to you. Alright, for Mindscape, Flight of the Intruder. Of course, on the spine, all they wrote was Intruder. From Tato. I spent a lot of time trying to clean up this label. This is as good as I got it. But it was written on all over the place. The Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy. If I push in far enough, you can still see what I didn't get. But that looks so much better than it did originally. Okay, I'm going to have to try and find a better one of this. From LJN, Friday the 13th. Okay, based on the outrageous, unpredictable, and fun-filled TV game show, which I'd never heard of, from High Tech Expressions, Funhouse. Yes, they were licensing even obscure titles. Okay, from Atari, well, Engine. Gauntlet. This was released twice by Tenjin. The first time in a licensed release, and then this second one, which is unlicensed. Okay, this supports four players from Mindscape. Gauntlet 2. I spent so many hours playing Gauntlet in the arcades. The arcade version was set up for four players as well, and that was the best way to play it. Okay, a homebrew from RetroZone and a red cartridge. Copyright 2009-2010. Designed by Tom Levack. Lesson code TOM GV GVL. Jim Venture. Okay, from Acclaim George Foreman's KO Boxing. Okay, from Activision, the truly horrendous Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was also released for the Sega Master System. That was published by Sega, and it's a big improvement over this version. And in the UK, I believe they got a game called The New Ghostbusters, which was even better. Again from Activision, 
Ghostbusters 2. From Electro Brain Ghoul School. Okay, from Toho Godzilla Monster of Monsters. Another copy. Okay, from Vic Tokai. Golgo 13, top secret episode. Later on in my collection, we'll get to the unpublished prototype of the sequel to this game that I have. This is the only licensed game from Nintendo. Or licensed by Nintendo, I don't know which way you would say that that features an implied sex scene. How Vic Tokai managed to get around that, I don't know. Okay, from LJN. Need a better one of these. Gotcha. The sport. From Konami. Radius. I believe this one is a launch title and it's Rob compatible. Gyromite. There's a little picture of Rob on there. From Ultra Gyrus Okay This is a hacked game I believe it's a hack of Wacky Racers Harry Story Although I think that should be Harry's story, but whatever. Of course, I love pinball, real pinball, but I have a lot of pinball games. And this one is one that was developed by Rare from Trade West. High speed. from Sony ImageSoft Hook I have a reproduction of the unpublished prototype of this game for the Master System Okay from Electronic Arts The Immortal from American Video Entertainment, or AVE. Impossible Mission 2. This game was also published by SEI, but they're identical. Games are, anyway. And finally, for this video, from Tengen, if you would like to see the Atari 2600 emulated on the NES, here's your chance. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Until next time, stay awesome.